guys, welcome to the recap. Uh, this is going to be week two of our Christmas series. Um, really excited. Christmas is right around the corner. There's so much to do at a church around Christmas time. I feel like it's already here. Um, so let's let's dive into it. Um, you know, we're going to start off by talking about the fact that there are some things in life that you just can't explain. Sometimes there are things that you just have to experience for yourself. Uh, almost if you've ever had one of those nights where you're hanging out with your friends and you guys just spend like an hour laughing at the dumbest stuff and to try and explain to somebody else why you were laughing so hard that milk shot out of your nose or you couldn't breathe, um, it just wouldn't make sense. Like the joke wouldn't make sense to them because they just would have had to have been there. Or if you've ever seen something beautiful, like it's kind of hard to describe just the majesty and the impact and the vastness of something like the Grand Canyon um, and just the beauty and the incredible rock formation that is there. Um, or I've been to some crazy sporting events uh, at Florida State football games when they were sort of at the height of their power most recently. Um, games where we made a comeback against Clemson and you got 70,000 fans all just doing the war chant in unison and then just going nuts and losing their minds when we win the game. Um, those are things that the words don't quite do them justice. It's just kind of something that you have to experience to truly, truly get it. And so we've been talking about the Christmas story. We started with week one and um, just talked about it briefly. And I would be willing to bet that most of you guys are familiar with the Christmas story in some way, shape, or fashion. Even if you're not a church person, most people have heard about the baby Jesus and the manger and Joseph and Mary and riding on the donkey and the, the wise men. I mean, there's nativity scenes all over the place during Christmas time. So it's most likely you've come into contact with this story. And maybe some of you guys are so familiar that it just doesn't have an impact on you. Uh, maybe some of you guys have heard the story and you don't quite believe it. Um, or maybe some of you have heard it and you just don't quite get why some of these Christians are so excited about the Christmas story. And, and I get it because some of you guys have heard the, about the Christmas story and just the life-changing love of God and all these things from people who don't live that out. And so if this thing's really this impactful, then why isn't it changing these people? But this Christmas story is truly, truly amazing. So we're just going to kind of go over it real quick. But before we do, I want to encourage you to do something. I want to encourage you to just take a second and just try not to bring any preconceived notions, any prior thoughts into this neck experience. Because I I want you to imagine yourself in this story. How would you feel? What would you do? How would you react? What thoughts would you have? What would be going through your mind? Because the truth is, this isn't just some story. This is history. These are real people who went through real scenarios, who dealt with real problems, and probably had real doubts about God and who he was and what he was doing. So as we break down the Christmas story, I just encourage you to try and rethink it as if you're hearing it for the first time, understanding that this is a real story about real people who are in a real situation. and Try and put yourself there. So the Christmas story goes a little bit like this. There was a young girl named Mary and a young man named Joseph. They were engaged to be married. And one day, Mary uh, gets a message from an angel of the Lord. And this angel says that she's going to be pregnant. And she's confused as to how that's going to happen because her and Joseph have not done anything yet that would lead to her getting pregnant. And she's never been with any other men. And the angel of the Lord tells her that she is going to be having a baby through the Holy Spirit, through the power of God. She will conceive, and none of the other stuff is necessary um, that God can create life right there in her womb, which is pretty amazing. And of course, um, she struggles with this, but eventually she accepts, like, wow, this is so cool. Um, I'm going to do this. And then she has the job of telling her uh, fiancé that she's pregnant. And it's not his, but it's also not anybody else's. And understandably, Joseph is like, nope, definitely going to divorce this girl. 
Um, and so then he also is visited by an angel of the Lord who tells him that this baby is from God and that they're going to name it Jesus and just tells him all these wonderful things about his future son. And so they decide to go through with it and uh, the pregnancy goes along. And then one day uh, the Roman ruler that's in control of their area decides he wants to take a census and count up all the people. So they had to travel back to where uh, Joseph's ancestors are from. Um, and so then he goes to the city of David, otherwise known as Bethlehem. And uh, Mary is very pregnant at this point, you know, getting ready to bust. And they get to the city, and of course, everybody's doing this, so there's no room for them at any of the inns or anything like that. And so um, they find a place to stay, and they're staying with animals. They're, they're sleeping next to animals, and that's where Mary has her baby. And it's just such an incredible, incredible story, piece of history, because of how God chose to show up. I mean, think about it. If you were God, how would you choose to show your glory and your strength and your majesty to earth? My guess is you would at least be clothed. But God chose to show up in a different way. As people had this thought about who God was and about how, you know, maybe if I do the right things or maybe I just, I, I just have to make sure God's not angry at me. And that's not really who he is. And so he came in a way that really displayed his character. He showed up in a humble, exposed, and vulnerable state as a helpless baby. I mean, that's crazy that the God of the universe would choose to come as a helpless baby. He could have come to earth any way he wanted to, but that's how he chose to do it. It's an incredible fact about who God is. And then God says, God sends an angel to appear to shepherds and tell them they're the first people that are told about the birth of the Savior. And this is significant because God invites them to come and see. The angel says, Go and see for yourselves. This say on this night the Savior is born. And He's inviting shepherds, which basically means he's inviting everyone because in those days, a shepherd was sleeping with a sheep, so they smelled. They didn't have any particular significance or status. They weren't wealthy. Um, probably people just didn't hang out with them a ton. They're out tending the sheep all day, and they would stay out there with them. So God could have sent an angel to anybody, but he sends it to the shepherds. And again, I, I think this is so intentional and so significant about who God is. It's an, it's an invitation for everyone to come and see for themselves. And God constantly uses the marginalized to speak through. And I want you to know that this Christmas season, that invitation is the same. If you're not sure about the Christmas story or you don't quite believe it or you're on the fence or even if you just straight up don't believe it, that invitation is the same to you to come and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take somebody else's word for it. But go and see for yourself. Go experience Jesus for yourself. And man, what a Better, what better way could there to be to spend Christmas than experiencing Jesus for ourselves? Your faith can't be based on what somebody else says or what somebody else tells you. Your faith has to be based on your own decision and your own experience with God. So go and see this season. Go experience Jesus for yourself. And there's a couple of ways that I have for you to do that. Number one is show up. Is there a church near you doing Christmas services? Is Do you have a church that you're going to that's doing Christmas services? What's the series that they're starting in January? Like what are we, what is starting at the new year? Because those are the places that you can show up and experience Jesus. So I'd encourage you to show up first of all and keep showing up. Don't just give it one shot and then be like, well, nothing happened, so I'm never going back. 
keep showing up. And the second is this. Ask questions. Find a pastor or a friend or somebody you trust and ask the questions. What's bothering you? What holds you back? What are the things that you're curious about that keep you from just totally following God? Ask those questions. Keep showing up and ask those questions. And go and see for yourself who this God is that decided to take on human form and come as a baby on Christmas Day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I uh, hope you have a wonderful holiday. We won't be meeting again until after the new year, so it'll be a few weeks before we post. So hope you guys have an awesome Christmas, and uh, I hope your days are filled with joy. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.